right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. We got to pull up. We're ready to rock and roll, baby. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on? What's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans? Welcome. It feels like a post game show, doesn't it? It feels like a post game show, even though I don't do post game shows for baseball yet. That may that's going to change in postseason. You guys know how I roll. The further they get in the postseason, we'll do more. Uh, we'll do more. Hell, I may do them all. I don't know. I may do all their SEC baseball or SEC tournament included. All right, let me get a swiggity swig here. Hold on. Mm. Oh, you know the best. They're not a sponsor, but it's the best soda on the market. This is a zero sugar. That's right. It's Pepsi. Mm. They should be a sponsor, shouldn't they? Don't get me wrong. Don't go throwing rocks at me, Coke fans. Vanilla Coke is fantastic, I must admit. I do like vanilla Coke. All right? Coke in a glass bottle. Also not bad. Pepsi's better in a glass bottle. Pepsi's just superior. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I left Ruskin and Zach. <laughs> I, I left a Ruskin and Zach rerun to come here. Oh, a rerun. Oh, uh, best decision of my day, he says. Boss Hog. A rerun, though. All right. Well, close enough, I guess. <laughs> Appreciate you being here again. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Uh, shout out to Patreon supporters. Man, oh, man, we're floating. We're floating. We're above a hundred and we're at 101 total members, 101 total Patreon supporters. They've been getting the, the, the deets. They've been getting the deets for you, for, for the older generation. That's short for details. We've been on top of the, uh, transfer portal for football. We've got some names. We got some names. We've got some, uh, I'm not going to give away everything that Patreon members get, but I'll give you some of it, right? I'll give you a little bit. I'll give you, I'll give you a taste. It'll be wonderful. So we'll go over that. We're of course going to talk about this baseball game. We'll start off there here in just a second. Make sure to check out all the links provided for you down below. How about our newest sponsor, Insurance Max? A special shout out to them. They're the newest The latest addition to the Tusk Talk with Ty sponsorship family. They offer business insurance, business, personal, life, and health insurance. They've got you covered. Again, they have a link down below. They've also got retirement. Uh, They'll hook you up. All right? Give them a call or go to their website. They can answer any questions that you have. Again, that's Insurance Max. So special shout-out to them. They are the newest sponsor to Tusk Talk with Ty. Yeah, I'm looking for more. Someone actually DM'd me this morning. Are you looking for more sponsors? Yes, I am. I haven't cold called anybody. I haven't had time. My wife is in Seattle for a a, a conference. I'm I'm you know I'm both parents here uh, today and from here on out. But I, I I do I say from here on out. Hold on until she gets back on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try and get some get on the phone and get on the horn with some more uh, businesses and maybe bring a couple more people on. Assuming I can find time. My God, this week has been crazy, you guys. It's been crazy. Last week, I complained about it. This week, it's it's like doubled up. It's crazy. Also, shout out to Direct Service Overhead, the garage door company. Same day services, quality parts, affordable outcomes. They've got your back. I've got reviews in our Discord. It's on the top left. You can't miss it once you come into Tusk Talk. If you're curious, it's that time of year. It's boiling hot outside. Get a new garage door. Keep your garage at least keep that temperature down some. You'd be amazed at what these doors can do, especially these this nice one I got slapped on in front of my house. It's fantastic. Uh, hundreds of five star reviews, quality parts, free estimates. So just call them. All you gotta do, better than best results. Five zero one two four four three six six seven. You guys all help make it happen, and I and I do appreciate you sponsors, Patreon. Uh, YouTube ad revenue is, it's just, it's changed so much. Thanks to the two ad apocalypses we had. Thanks a lot. The political channels get, uh, bombarded and then, uh, ads or, or, or sponsors and whatnot. They, you know, I'm talking about the big, you know, the YouTube sponsors, the big people, uh, they give money to YouTube to be a part of it. Well, let's just say it's gotten mucky. It's gotten mucky over the years, so it forces you to rely. I mean, you've got to bring on Patreon. You got to bring on sponsors, right? 
Uh, all right. Man, oh, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for being here. Again, make sure you like, share, and if you're new, hit the subscribe button. Patreon's been busy. We're still trying to keep up with basketball. We're still waiting. We do kind of have an update on uh, Coach Cal here in just a minute. We'll start off with the post game here for this one. Uh, Arkansas, we'll start with the first game since, we, since we're going to cover one. Let's cover them both. Texas Tech rolls in here. Arkansas is undefeated against the Big 12 unless one slipped me. Is there a game that's slipped in my mind? Are, they're 3-0 and right now against the Big 12, right? Oklahoma State. Good old Oakey Light, who's not a bad, that's not a bad dub for Arkansas. And now you got two wins over Texas Tech, who is uh, pretty good. Texas Tech's not half bad. What are they now? 26 and 13, I think, after these two games. Arkansas uh, continues. I mean, they're they're hitting off to a slow start, especially in that first game. Not for Texas Tech. Six runs in the second inning. I had someone in my chat. It's the same guy. God love him. He's actually, he watches everything I do, and I appreciate him. Shout out to Marco Leone. But anytime I talk baseball and I, and I get into just, if I just skim the surface on analytics, he wants to talk to me and tell me how, well, this, that number doesn't matter, Ty. All this other stuff matters. Yes, slugger percentage, on base, all that stuff matters. Slugging percentage, all that stuff matters. But let's not sit here and act like when Arkansas, a batting average, team batting average should account for something. Is it the most important stat? No, it's not. It's not. I think all the offensive stats combined together are very, very important. But what matters? What matters the most? What about just runs per game? That kind of that matters a little bit, right? It means you're getting on base or you're or you're hitting home runs. You're doing something, right? Do you guys know that Arkansas in the SEC and runs per game is bottom three in the SEC? Literally, I looked over all the offensive stats. And I actually posted them in the last comment section. I pinned it for the top. You know, this is not a mediocre offensive team. Arkansas struggles. Texas Tech is not an elite pitching team. This is not an elite. They're not horrible, I don't think, on the mound. Last I saw, I didn't go over all their numbers. Um, but Arkansas struggled to hit on these guys, especially today. And yesterday, they just got off to a slow start. They finally found their bats later on in the game. Uh, Texas Tech is, I think, a, a team that we could be hearing about causing some issues in postseason. I don't know if they get to Omaha or not. Their offense is spectacular. That is a good offensive team who who really made Arkansas's pitching, especially in game one, look pretty rough. I mean, they had six runs in one inning in the first game. They had six runs in the second inning. And they'd back that up with two more runs in the uh, fourth and then in the seventh. 13 total hits. Don't sit here and tell me that batting average doesn't matter. Uh, and Arkansas did find a way late in the game. What a way to win it. Nine to eight Arkansas wins in the bottom of the ninth with that last run. Fantastic. What a dramatic. I, I tell you, if there was a time to do a post game, it would have been for that one. But I knew I didn't. You know, what else was there to really talk about? I was waiting on some, I was hoping some stuff would happen today. It didn't. Waiting on an announcement. Uh, but Ben Bybee struggled, gave up six hits, six runs. All six were earned. Um, just two strikeouts. It was not a great day for him. Uh, we saw Fouch, Wood, Coyle, McIntyre, and Gackle both got on the mound and pitched a little bit. Uh, even McIntyre gave up a couple of hits and an earned run, and uh, but he did end up with the second most strikeouts with three. Gage Wood had four strikeouts pitching against uh, 10 batters versus Ben Bybee, who faced the same amount of batters but only had two strikeouts, only had half. 6-10 ERA for Bybee, rough day. But Texas Tech is that kind of offense. Now, to be fair, I don't know if their lineup was any different in midweek. We know that they did not face Arkansas's actual like what you would expect to see on a weekend they did see some of those pitchers McIntyre being one of them uh Gage Wood who might find himself in a situation pitching on the weekends later on we'll see Fouch is a guy you know I mean Gackle so they face some of that typical pitching on the weekend but they obviously didn't play they didn't face any of the starting pitching and uh, so that does matter but this is a really good offense it's tough when you play a power five a visiting power five, or even doesn't matter, at their place, at home, neutral field, doesn't matter, with a top 10 offense. This is what it looks like. Arkansas's pitching is just good enough. They slowed them down, 
And they still kind of, again, I mean, they had six runs. Six runs. I don't remember how many hits they had that in that second inning. But they uh, shredded Arkansas's bullpen um, and, and uh, made, made their way through it pretty easily in game one. Game two changes it up a little bit. Game two is a little bit less... Uh, not as uh, didn't have the dramatics right, but they did that that home run that double play was huge in the ninth inning, and then of course the uh, next guy comes up and hits a solo home run, and, and instead of it being five three, it's five four. Uh, but Arkansas manages to escape. Pretty, pretty, uh, you know, not a, not a bad day defensively for Arkansas, other than other than the uh, I think it was what the second inning, third inning when. When the infield couldn't spot the ball, a pop up, a real high pop up ball, they couldn't spot it in the sunlight. I think it was Stovall who tried to come over and make the grab, and he just dropped it out of his glove. The ball must have just been lined up perfectly with the sun. Good luck catching that. Texas Tech didn't have the same struggles, but that was obviously when they saw those same or similar type of pop ups. It was a little while later, so obviously the sun's come down a little bit. That has an impact. I didn't play baseball long enough. I, I can't go into detail and all that. But the sun's in the damn sky. It makes it hard to spot the ball when it's up in the, what looks like what's up in the clouds. I haven't played baseball since like the sixth grade. It's pretty good. Playing first base, I wasn't bad. Uh, but yeah, Stovall, I mean, no one really hit the ball extremely well. Arkansas had just four hits in game two, uh, five runs, seven strikeouts, seven walks. Three hit by pitches for Arkansas. We saw Fisher, Frank, Dossett, Faraday, and Hewlett, Hewlett, Hewlett all on the mound. Uh, you kind of knew. I, I don't know what it is. Hewlett, when he comes up on the mound, I feel pretty confident Arkansas is going to be just fine. He faced uh, – how many batters? Did he face three batters? I feel like it was three. He came in and pitched the whole inning, right? Yeah. Yeah, batter's face three. There it is. Okay, different screen. So Arkansas is, escapes a tough, a good power five opponent who's a – when you're top 15, top 20 in a given category at this point in the year, you've had three or so weeks of, of – or, well, more than that, conference matchups coming out of the Big 12. You've got a decent record. And, oh, by the way, you're again, you're a top 15, top 10 offense in most offensive stats. And then you're coming in to pitch against midweek pitching. Yeah, you're you're gonna make things interesting. I thought they would split. I thought Arkansas and Texas Tech would split. We had, of course, our boy Judd and Discord, who just he just knew Arkansas was gonna get swept. They're headed. They're this is gonna be bad. To be fair, I did kind of assume that Arkansas was in a little bit of a slump, but I think at the plate they are struggling a little bit. Again, Texas Tech is not elite pitching. You're facing midweek pitching which sometimes doesn't matter because matchups matter just as much as anything, you know, lefty on lefty and whatnot. But uh, there are certain pitchers that can, that can, you know, do some real damage if, even in the midweeks, you know, even in the midweek games. So not still not super thrilled, but I love the timely, the timely effort on both offense and defense for, for Arkansas against a very good opponent in Texas Tech. The Red Raiders come out of this 0 for 2 against the the – Giants right now that are the Cardin or Cardinals. Sorry, the, the no, they're definitely not Giants. Cardinals are not good. Bottom of the Central, uh, but the 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 Giants of the SEC. Let's just be real. Arkansas is still one of the top three teams in this league. We'll see how they do this weekend, man. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how they deal with this. Right, coming up on the weekend. Tough, tough, tough matchup on the road. I don't know Dave Van Horn's record. At uh, South Carolina in Columbia. Now, this is not the South Carolina team that, you know, I don't know how far you expect them to go, but they're playing pretty good ball. I think they're still ranked in the top 20, and you got to go there. Listen, I don't know if you drop this series or not. Again, it's a road series. You're already, like, your rank is still really good. What's crazy is you could drop this series, and it probably doesn't hurt you very much. They're going to come back. They only have one game next week. That's going to be against UAPB, and then they get Florida in Fayetteville. It's always fun to watch Arkansas and Florida play because no matter how good or bad either of these teams are, it always seems like it's, it's going to be at least a fun game. And then you got another tough midweek the week after that. You've got a, a, a Missouri State who I don't think record-wise is very good, but again, that's another team that just gives Arkansas fits. The real battles are coming. The last two of the three – 
series matchups for Arkansas at Kentucky, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Lexington. Boy, you know they're hungry. They're 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 bandwagon baseball fans up there who figured out kind of like Alabama finding basketball. It's like Kentucky finding finding baseball. They've got a pretty good squad this year. That's going to be May 3rd, uh, game 1 at 5:30, game 2 at 1, game 3 at 12. And then the final series will be at Texas A&M, who is also playing a really good brand of baseball. Mississippi State's the weekend before that, but let's be real. The, the two matchups you're highlighting on your schedule are, are Kentucky, or those series, and then at Texas A&M. So we'll see how they, how they, how they go. The season's closing. It's, it's closing quick, man. I mean, we're already coming up at the end of the month. By the time they get through with uh, UAPB, Next week, you're boom. You're there. You're at the end of the month. You're you're at your uh, your home against Florida. So your next five games, well, after I'm sorry, next five games will be in Fayetteville after South Carolina. UAPB is in Little Rock. Hogs in the Rock. Don't know with it being UAPB. It's just going to be an SEC Network, uh, SEC Network Plus channel. So you know you know how it works. As long as you have one of those. You should have access to the game one way or another. Uh, Woo Pig, what's up, Chris Meadows? How you doing, man? Appreciate all you guys. Make sure, again, you like, share, and subscribe. We have a poll up. Hog football will crush these last portal spots. 48% of you said yes. I'm actually surprised by that. I'm not going to lie. I was really expecting this to be overwhelmingly no. But only 18% of you have voted no. I'm legitimately surprised by that. Somewhere in between is 33% and then 18% with no. UAPB pitcher is fire. Be be aware. Are they going to actually face him, Angel? <clears throat> J-Dog says 4-8 and eight next year. Man, you're not the only one. You're not the only one suggesting that. It, it, listen, who knows? Defense has got to take a, a pretty big step forward. Uh. <sighs> Well, there's so much work. There's so much work with that team, and obviously the offense has got to really bring it. Uh, Looked like Stone was cussing somebody. What? wonder what they said to him. Amazing Arkansas ranks uh, 49th in home runs. Yeah, their their offensive numbers are not good. A lot of people pretty pissed off about, you know, about how the, the offense is just so bad. And I I don't think it's – listen, there are some areas where they're not horrible, okay? But overall, Arkansas is near the bottom in several uh, offensive categories. Again, they're they're bottom in – well, they're right in the middle in home runs. They're at 53 home runs on the year. Okay, whatever. Batting average is 10th, which I'm told doesn't – I guess doesn't mean – I know it doesn't mean what it once did, but it's still – I mean – what is one of the things that Arkansas does? They strand runners constantly. Well, what's a number? What's an analytic you could look at and go, I wonder what would help with this? I wonder if, I don't know, making contact with the ball. Arkansas also is tied for first in hitting into double plays. I mean, it's crazy. RBI, they're, they're 12th or 13th. They're tied with Ole Miss. LSU's in front of them. Florida's in front of them. Well, Florida's got their own set of issues on offense as well. Uh, their batting average is actually behind Arkansas. Uh, but yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of work to be done offensively. But again, I want to I want to stress this. Uh, Marco Leone, who left that comment, I don't know if he's in live chat or not. He watches everything I do. Shout out to him. I like him. We have <laughs> we've gone back and forth before. Uh, he's one of like the five people I could think of off the top of my head that always are just going to argue with you, and it's like, all right, whatever. Um, and maybe he's got some good points, and he does. There are some areas offensively that they're not awful. And I would say timely hitting has actually been something. Obviously, you I don't think that's an analytic that you can actually put pen to paper on. But I was talking with uh, good old Arky56. I don't know if he's in chat or not. That's Pops. That's my dad. We were talking about that, and you know, he brought up timely hitting has actually been pretty good for Arkansas, and I agree with that. And we saw that. We saw that in this two-game series against Texas Tech. You know, when you're down seven to nothing, most teams, including ranked SEC teams, some of them might be like, all right, I don't know what our odds here. And look what Arkansas did. They fought back. Incredible. And then, you know, you could say the same about Texas Tech. They clawed. They, they're they going to be good. Texas Tech's going to win some ball games. 
So that's right. Uh, KJ Jefferson got arrested. Timely hitting. There he is. There's RQ56. Timely hitting plus good pitching is winning games, and that is absolutely right. That is what's winning. Arkansas's offense may be meh. It may be meh. May just be kind of like, I don't know. Uh, we're not hitting the balls. We're not hitting the balls. That's that's Coach Cow. That's his take on baseball. They're not joggling balls. But uh, <laughs> the timely hitting and the pitching has been great. Pitching lately, last five games, eh, they'll, they'll pick it back up. I think they'll be fine. Uh, Diggs really fell off. Turns out he's been playing hurt. Yeah, his non-throwing shoulder, if you guys haven't heard about Diggs, his non-throwing shoulder is a little messed up. I think there was an opportunity for him to maybe play today, but Dave said he was going to kind of look at it and, and that if, if – I mean, we all knew he was – I mean, after listening to Dave talk, the first part of that sentence or when he was talking about Diggs, you could kind of tell by the time he was talking about his availability that he wasn't going to play in this in this series – this two-game series with Texas Tech. But it sounds like if he's not full go on Friday, then I guess he's not going to play. But I guess he is traveling. So we'll see. They're going to need digs this weekend. They're going to need him. You're going to always need digs, right? Uh, they boosted my confidence after the red-white games has bought Magna. Oh, talking about football. Yeah, for sure. Full show. K.J. Jefferson got into a little bit of trouble. Now, he's cleared this up on Twitter. I don't have the video, but he's cleared this up. So let me read you the tweet. And I know someone's going to say, why are you talking about K.J.? He's not here anymore, blah, blah, blah. Well, for, for starters, he's back at Fayetteville. And uh, also, I it's been an ongoing conversation between me and other people I've had several DMs over it. I, you know, so, yeah, of course, it's, I mean, he's a former Razorback, and he's back in town, and he had a mug shot posted across social media. Of course I'm going to freaking talk about it, you Facebook boomers. So just chill. Sit down, all right? Take your swig of the Pepto-Bismol, all right? Matlock, I'm sure, comes on later, all right? I'm sure there's a Spaghetti Western coming on here in a little bit. Just chill, all right, and let me talk about this. <sighs> God love Facebook. This is from Brandon Hillwig from U, uh, at UCF Sports. Via a source, KJ Jefferson was ticketed for speeding slash reckless driving in the Fayetteville area in May of 2023. The level of speeding was such that it escalated to a misdemeanor and not a regular traffic ticket. I think that's 20. That's a minimum of 20 over, right? Isn't that the law in Arkansas now? They char uh, the charge was not processed until he moved to Orlando to enroll at UCF. KJ has been in communication with law enforcement, and it was mutually agreed upon that he would return to Arkansas after UCF's spring game in order to face the charges. So that's why he was booked today. So earlier today, uh, don't have all the all the details, but this is just the beginning of the formal process, which will include a plea agreement and community service. UCF has been aware of this and knew this would come at some point this week. This will not impact his status at UCF. Not a big deal. He took to Twitter today, and he kind of talked about it. I don't think he was a big fan of his of his mugshot being posted, and I don't blame him. You know, Listen, all I've ever heard about KJ, he's a good kid. All right, I am rooting for him. I don't, I don't care. Throw your tomatoes at me. I, I really don't care. I'm rooting for him down there. I don't know what he does. It's it's the Gus system. I don't think Gus has the greatest reputation for reviving quarterbacks' careers or adding or building up their careers outside of maybe, I don't know, Cam Newton. Uh, but And I, I know there's been a couple of decent ones since then, but, I mean, let's be real. I, I don't know that you're sending your kid to, to – like, he's not the first choice on your list of names. Hell, give me Bobby Petrino any day of the week. Over Gus, I'm just saying, if you're going to talk about developing a quarterback and getting him ready for the NFL, uh, we know Bobby's track record. I'm sorry, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Not that Gus is as terrible, all right, but um, but I am. No matter what happens, I'm rooting for KJ down in uh, down in Orlando in uh, uh, for UCF. I'll be rooting for him. I will. So, you know, I hope you do too. I hope, and also, I've seen some nasty stuff being said. I'm not going to read them. I'm not going to mention the names or the Twitter handles, but, you know, I mean, whatever. But 
don't be that guy or girl. Just, you know what? Wish them the best. Listen, <laughs> you know, I did some stupid stuff when I was 21, 22. Arky56, you're more than welcome to leave the chat now. I did some pretty dumb stuff when I was a kid, all right? Did I drive 25 over the speed limit or whatever it was, whatever, whatever the speed was? I'm sure I did once or twice, you know? Come on, man. Me and my, my, my mono white my uh, Nissan 95 Nissan Sentra with the moon, the moon roof. Come on. Of course I was I was the, the four cylinders in that bad boy. They didn't know what hit them. All right? So, yeah, I'm sure I acted like an idiot. I'm sure you did too. So, unfortunately he got caught. I didn't. <laughs> Sorry KJ. This one's for you, pal. Good luck dealing with the law. It's never fun, especially in Arkansas. By the way, unmarked cars should be that's unconstitutional. Unmarked cars are bullshit. If you're a police officer, I'm sorry, but it is. And I've got friends of mine that are police officers. Some of them watch this show. Unmarked cars are BS. What do you bet? That's what got him. Although, to be fair, they probably should have if he was going that far. I don't commend driving that fast, but still, stupid unmarked cars. <sighs> watch if you're, listen, for all of you who live up here and you're traveling out west of Oklahoma, watch your speeding once you get uh, into West Siloam. Them dudes, they'll hide and they, they know, they know what's going on. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> uh, anyways, so good luck to KJ down in uh, UCF. Hopefully he gets this taken care of. Sounds like he's going to get a little bit of community service. Nothing super duper serial. So, uh, all right, still looking at this poll. Hog football will crush these last portal spots. It just continues to climb, 47%. 36% of you say somewhere in between. You guys are actually hopeful, okay? And then 17, so you're, you're under 20. I, I figured no would be dominating this poll. I really did. Uh, who are we going to get? <laughs> yeah, who are we going to get? I'm not reading that long shanks, but I hear you. <laughs> Got caught. It happens. <laughs> uh, did you get, did you, uh, what do you, what do you, <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, all right. Uh, West Siloam tried to get me a ticket for five miles over. Yeah. West Siloam, they don't mess around. They don't mess around at West Siloam. Pulled my wife over. I don't even remember. I think she was going like six or seven miles over the speed limit. Of course, he gave us a ticket. All right. Let's uh, get into Coach Cal really quick. He's on the move. Oh, by the way, before we do that, again, don't forget, check out the links. Support the, the local businesses that support this local business, that support this channel. Insurance Max is one of those. All right. They offer business, personal, life, and health insurance, retirement. They got you. Link is provided for you down below. Click on that link. It'll take you to their website. kind of shows you what they can do. But again, they are, they are the latest sponsor to this channel. Look at the reactions in Discord. I appreciate that on a sponsorship page. That's so cool. Thank you, guys. But uh, hey, if you're if you're in the neighborhood looking for some for some insurance, go hit up Insurance Max. <laughs> oh no, Johnson Johnson Arkansas used to be really bad when I was a kid. You did everything you could to avoid going to Johnson. I mean, it was bad. O OG Fayetteville kids know what's up. I don't know if it's still as bad. I'm sure it is because you know. I mean, it's a it's the armpit of Fayetteville. Let's be real, or maybe it's the 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 ass of <laughs> Fayetteville. I, uh, yeah, you know, it's right there next to the mall, the NWA mall, and you're trying to cut to get into Springdale. You just got to be careful. They'll get you in Johnson. Oh, boy. All right, so Calipari is on the move. The latest, uh, Paul Biancardi, is that how you pronounce his last name? Biancardi? Biancardi? B-I-A-N-C-A-R-D-I. Cardi. By Cardi. I don't know. He does he does basketball recruiting for ESPN. Uh, the latest on Liam McNeely, ESPN's number 11, top uncommitted prospect in the country. Today, Arkansas Razorbacks new head coach, John Calipari, made a visit to, uh, to Florida's Monteverde Academy. McNeely has an official...
official visit scheduled for UConn for Connecticut on April 22nd and 23rd with no other visits currently planned. I, I know they've only got one. Granted, it's a big one. They got a big commitment out of the portal. Another, you know, a former Kentucky player. I'm kind of with people. I'm not saying you should panic. I'm not saying I'm not suggesting anyone should panic because he is on the road after all, and he's he's doing what he can. And I don't really know how he. I don't know if this is just something where he's going to stay on the road and then come back and then start to accept commitments. We don't know if there's some that are, uh, you know, that maybe they've committed but they're silent. You know, uh, I don't know. Now Liam McNeely, who's actually a recruit, he's a part of the 2025 class or 24 class. Sorry. Out of uh, Richardson, Texas, he's a small forward, six foot seven, hundred ninety pounds. He's yeah, he's considered his scout grade on ESPN. Not that I basketball recruiting like the top one hundred. I think ESPN actually does a pretty good job. I don't trust them for football news at all or recruiting. I just don't. But uh, there was a time when you maybe kind of paid attention to what they were doing with football recruiting. But basketball, they're not too bad when you're talking about the ESPN one hundred. Uh, but they like him as the 11th overall player. He's got a scout grade again of 92. He's a top two player in his state. Alabama, Indiana, Kansas, Michigan, Oklahoma, Texas, and UConn all have offers. There's a bunch more. Uh, right now he is undeclared. We don't know what he's going to do. We don't know uh, where or he's uncommitted, I should say. No plans of a visit, but Liam McNeely would be huge. Again, a 6'7". Uh, six seven hundred ninety pound forward. That would be a very nice. Well, it'd be it'd be good for recruiting, wouldn't it? I don't know if they're gonna. You know, and again, someone I got, I got a text early this morning asking me about who's staying. If they're gonna get anybody back out of the portal, you know, whether it be Blocker or uh, uh, Mark or or Battle. And right now, we don't know. It's kind of it's just all in limbo at the moment. You know, I'm going to cover it. If I hear something, we'll talk about it here or we'll talk about it in Discord. We'll probably do some Discord lives. We got to do a wheel spin. I'm going to try and do an XP wheel spin. If not Thursday night, maybe Friday night. I'm planning on doing some stuff with my with with my kids this weekend since their mom is in Seattle for a few days. So I've got some plans to hang out with them and do some stuff with them, but I'm going to try and plan. So maybe if there's anything we can get caught up on that we don't hit here, we'll hit in those wheel spins. But usually we cover it all here. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Uh, trying to scroll up here. <laughs> I wonder if people are going to say we made a mistake, quote unquote, by winning – this series. I never found out what that was all about. That was so bizarre. Was that a comment made by a hog fan on Twitter? I don't know. You guys are Jeremy Gray says, uh, Hey, Ty just joined. I'm surprised at the lack of talk on sorry. Should we expect big things or what do you think? That's actually a really good question. Jeremy. Uh, I'll say this. Sorry. Spring camp, if I've, if I've said it a million times, I'll say it a million more times, it is very hard to just look at a guy and go, okay, yeah, no, he's a star. You know, because last year we were talking about Tesla and all these guys, right? We're, we, were, we were amazed by what these guys were doing in practice. They were making highlight catches. And what transpired on the field, I'm going to stand by what I said all along. Receivers did have a hard time getting open. I saw that from the receiver from Tesla again this spring, and we saw it on the field last year. On defense, I don't know that I saw Sori make a whole lot of big plays. I think he had a couple of pass breakups and some 11-on-11 uh, 11 11 scrimmages. Uh, I can't remember if those were on days where they were full pads or not. I tried to watch the linebackers as much as I could. Unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of film. I've got I've got a lot of footage on my phone that I have not posted. I was actually talking to someone earlier today about this. Uh, I've I've got a lot, and what I typically do, what I did last spring, and what I've done the last two fall camps, I'll just sit here and watch it. And that's part of the reason why I film so much. A lot of it does not get posted. Maybe I'll share a little bit in Discord, but. Uh, 
So I'll go back and rewatch, but Sori just I, and that doesn't mean so what why why I brought up Tesla was because that just because he doesn't or does whatever happens in spring, it doesn't mean that that's going to transpire in the in fall. I, I don't know what to make of of Sori in terms of like his his ceiling. We know he was kind of limited at Georgia. He struggled to get on the field. He is a former five star player. You got a couple of them in that defense, right? You got a couple of former Georgia Bulldogs that were five stars out of high school. One of them is struggling to make the. Uh, he's not. He's not a starter. He started a little bit last year and then he kind of disappeared. You just never know what you're in for. Now the season could unfold, and all of a sudden we're looking back and going, "Oh my God, sorry, might be a a third round, second round draft pick. Maybe something beyond that, right?" Jackson's a really good example, right? Jackson. He he had a pretty good spring camp last year. Uh, I don't know that there was anything even out of fall camp that led me to believe this dude's, you know, uh, this dude's going to be elite. Now I did say his ceiling is first round because, you know, everyone I was that at the time I was talking to, whether it was local media, uh, whether it was the footage that I had watching him in camp, whether it was just talking with you guys and kind of going over what we had, uh, he certainly to me looks like someone who had a ceiling of a first round prospect. But we never really, never really showed itself until we saw it unfold. So I hope that answers your question. I, I just, it really, it's a giant question mark for me on him. I don't know. Um, I thought there were a couple of guys last year that they brought on that I thought for sure were going to be home runs, and they didn't pan out. They weren't that, you know, they struggled to start. And when they did, they had kind of piss poor performances. So it's tough. It's not to say that he was bad. There's nothing where I was like, oh, my God, you know. Again, I've said before about the linebackers, my concern is, isn't with everybody in that room. It's really, it's kind of like second team on back to the to the guys who you expect to push for third team. I'm a little bit, I don't know what that looks like, and it kind of lowers the ceiling a little bit, but you never know. That's the thing. You don't know until you see it unfold. Uh, Woo Pigs, uh, he's clearing up to Michael what was going on. Yeah, what's, go- what's KJ doing in Arkansas? We already talked about it. Woo Pigs got you covered. What's up, Woo Pig Pod? I see you, boys. I see you. What's up? What's up? It was great to meet those guys in person. That was cool. I've talked about it. I haven't actually talked to them since, but I had a uh, I had a really good time at walk-ons. That was fun. Over on uh, Weddington in Fayetteville. Let's scroll on down here. Y'all could get brawny. <laughs> All right. Anything's possible. You never know with Cal. Um, he was probably going over 90s as Woo Pig Pot. So uh, someone had said, I don't know if this is verified or not, that he was going, he, he was obviously speeding by quite a bit. Uh, 113 and a 70 is what someone texted me. And I don't, I didn't look at the, I saw his mug shot. It had to be pretty quick though. Had to be pretty fast. Again, take the poll if you guys haven't already. Hog football will crush these last portal spots. 46% of you say yes. 15% of you say no. 39% of you say somewhere in between. I think that's fair. I think it's going to be somewhere in between. Uh, Kyle Rote says he had a few, talking about, sorry, he had a uh, few open field tackles in the spring game. Think he'll be solid. Yeah, he made a couple of good plays. I had I forgot what I did with my notes, actually, from the spring game. Didn't intend on talking about the spring game, but I, I know I've got notes here somewhere. I don't know where they went. But uh This is why I need to hire this is why I need a producer. Cause I'm too ADD. I'm, I you guys should see my notes. They're just all over the place. <laughs> but yeah, uh he did he he had some uh, he made some pretty good plays. Is it my Monday notes? Patreon show notes, no. Interview prep, no. Well, I don't know where they're at. That's going to bug me now. I don't know where my notes went for the spring game. But anyways, it is what it is. Let's scroll down here. Uh, going down the hills is dangerous. I've hit 90 without realizing. Yeah. Woo Pig Pod says pass on Brawny. 
Think about what that could do for you, though, in a, from a recruiting standpoint. I mean, yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with not having him here um, for sure. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to roast me for that. But, yeah, no, it's uh, – I'm good. It, it might help you with recruiting, you know, just, just you know, recruits are going to want to be around that. And that's what's, that's what's fun about having Coach Cal here is that you could draw that kind of attention. Fayetteville is the center of attention right now, and and it will be. You know, now, if Cal, first couple of years, he just doesn't, he swings and misses and, you know, can't get Arkansas to the tournament the first two, three years, he, or he, he's one and done or can't get past the second round, you'll see that start to fade. But Arkansas is the center of attention because of Coach Cal and, and must put you in that position, right? Okay, portal players, bada bing, bada boom, baby. We've been adding, we've been keeping up with them now. The football discussion for Patreon chat has been real. Um, I mean, they're still going on about it. Or that, well, okay, that's old, but yeah, we've we've uh, we've been keeping up with them, and we've added a few players, and I haven't even, I'm not even, I don't even think I've got half the names that, that should be added to this list just yet. Again, if you're a Patreon supporter, you could see all these names. What I can, what I will say is Arkansas offered Kent State defensive lineman C.J. West. Now, this is a guy that could pop off if you go and watch some of his highlights. He's 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in there, about 315 pounds. Um, he's the highest graded player on PFF CJ West. I've told you guys interior defensive line, interior defensive line, interior defensive line and linebacker. And yeah, sure. Some offensive line, uh, help would, would be much appreciated, but CJ West has got to be someone that they go all in on. I'm sure Deke Adams has already been on. I'm sure he's, he's already reached out or is at least very well aware of what's well, we know he has. They've, they've given him an offer, actually. He was a three-star that signed with Kent State back in 2020. In 2023, he had two sacks, 40 total tackles. Yeah, I've got here noted that he was offered by Arkansas. He is, again, the highest-graded PFF player. I, he might be one of the highest in the portal, actually. He's got an 85.9 grade. Now, his tackle grade is not super high, and they're pretty strict on their tackle grades. If you miss a tackle, I guess it costs – I guess – I'm going to tell you guys, I'm still – some of these ratings should be scrutinized. I agree. Uh, but he dips down to a 46.1 on his tackle grade, if I looked at that correctly. But then his run defensive grade is 84.5. And then his pass rush is almost 80.0. He's at 79.9. Uh, this is going to be a guy, from what I understand, he's already a hot commodity in the portal out of Kent State. You know, will Arkansas land him? I don't know, but this would be this wouldn't just be a depth chart filler. I mean, I, I, Cam Ball is obviously you know going to you know shore up that spot, but, or he, he hard, already has. We know this, but he's going to be someone who pushes for time. He's not just a depth chart. Throw him in on third and short or third and goal line. He's he's a guy they're gonna they're gonna sub in and out often if you get him here. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that, whether or not he, I don't think we have a list just yet on who he's visiting, but again, CJ West, 6'2", 315, highest PFF grade on the Kent State roster is a must get for Arkansas. This has got to be a guy you, you circle. Uh, they also, I believe now, I don't know how legit this is, but I was told they did offer, and I might be messing this kid's name up, uh, Renee Conga. K-O-N-G-A, out of Rutgers. He is also, just like C.J. West, unranked. He, his PFF numbers don't really stand out much. There's not much there to write to write home to, about. But he is a pretty big kid. Played, he only played 189 snaps in 2023. 6'4", 290 pounds. Signed with the Rutgers back in 21. Uh, was a three-star out of high school. Should have two years of, of, of eligibility. Now, I actually don't know what CJ West's availability looks like. I don't have that written down, but uh, I'll I'll get that. I'll I'll double check that before the end of the night, and I'll I'll update that on our Discord page. So 
that is uh, those are a couple of names. Obviously, they're they're trying to get in on some defensive linemen. Another name they I don't know if Arkansas has offered him yet or not, or it's at least rumored that they're going to or that they already have. It's Darren Wiley. He was out of uh, ULM and then to Nevada. He's unranked, 6'1", 190-pound wide receiver. Again, nothing to write home to mom about about his PFF grades. He was a two-star that signed with UMass back in 2019. He's a pre-COVID player, man. I mean, that. how many of those guys are left? Hogs are rumored to have offered, so we'll see what they do there. He had 24 grabs for 400 yards. There's a whole, there's there's a couple more names. I'm going to get some more added tomorrow or by the end of the week. So if you're a Patreon member, you have access to this. You can see what that list looks like. Um, yeah, there's 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 another there's a couple more. There's one that's also pretty intriguing. A player that actually played under Bobby Petrino. He's on that list as well. He played under Bobby. So if you want to go check that out, be a Patreon member, go look at it. He is the last name on that list at the moment. Something to keep an eye on. Let's scroll on down here. <laughs> Tesla's been in school 22 years. He should have several seats. Uh, you never know, man. It, we we could also, as much as we want to, as much as we want to gripe about what they didn't do last year. And to be fair, I, I I thought he had a pretty good camp. I don't know that anybody really had a bad camp. There's a few people, there's a few players. You kind of wonder if they, after what we what kind of you know transpired through spring camp, just in terms of you know kind of way they carried themselves in practice, just kind of way they acted. You kind of wonder if who these guys, if they end up in the portal. I remember thinking that about a couple of guys last spring camp, and sure enough, they ended up either not playing in fall or, or they uh, hit the portal. But to Slock, I don't know. It, it could have been the system, right? The system of offense or defense, you, you've got to be able to put guys in the right place at the right time to help them – you know, be magnificent. You could be magnificent on your own, but we all know it's a team effort. It's the coach. It's the it's the it's the offensive coordinator. It's dialing up the right plays, knowing what the what the guy in front of you is doing, knowing what the defense is doing. It, it takes so much. You know, we watch these guys every Saturday, or we watch, you know, you you, you watch uh, the NFL, and you just see how effortless it is, and and you see these guys ball out. And we just think it's so automatic. Why aren't you doing that, Tesla? Why aren't you doing that, uh, you know, Armstrong? Why aren't you doing that? Well, it, it takes – it's a whole – it's the whole damn offense that's got to make this thing work. And last year, again, the offensive line – I'm not going to bark up that tree again. The offensive line had issues, and I think it really was a was a wrench and everything. The, um, the, the, the play calling was pretty predictable. There were a lot of issues with this team a year ago, and I don't know that they did their best – to put these guys in the best position to to have better seasons. I think with that that is the plus side with someone like Bobby Petrino who a I mean he's still a great offensive mind. He's still very well respected. Uh but B he's been here before. He's been in the league. He was in the SEC last year as an offensive coordinator. He kind of has a pretty good idea and I think he's up to snuff on just what the SEC's all about now all these years later. Again, having that year under his belt at A&M, maybe it kind of helped him uh, dip his dip his toe in the SEC pond. I don't know. But I just think that if there's anybody who can get these guys in the right position to make plays, it is someone like Bobby Petrino. But it takes everybody. It takes all 11 of those guys on the offense to help make this thing happen. So, having said that, I, I hope that um, – I hope that <laughs> – my wife just tried to call me. Oh, oh no. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it, mm, crap! What was I saying? Well, I just I just hope that everyone's on the same page. You know, we don't often talk about chemistry as strongly as we do, like basketball, right? Because it's the same five guys on the floor or the same seven or eight, nine guys playing together. But I felt like they were lacking that too last year. This team was lacking chemistry. They were predictable on offense. 
And some people want to put so much blame on the defense, too, and it's, it's like the offense did nothing to help them. They continuously put these guys in bad situations. Uh, the Sarge says, Woo Pig in the house long tie. Awesome. That's right, baby. That's right. Um, CJ Brown will play this year, I believe. He Now, he is someone who, who we saw him in the scrimmage a little bit. I think he's going to be a year two, year three guy, I, and I could be wrong. Give him a couple of years, and I really think he could uh, – He could have an impact. I don't think he's ready yet. Now, that doesn't mean you won't see him on the field. Hell, he may burn his red shirt this year. They may need him to. You know, so, and by the way, we know they are looking for a a wide receiver out of the portal. We know that that's something that's that's going down. They're looking for another wide receiver in the portal, but someone like C.J. Brown could still, could still find his way out onto the field. Who cares about Cal doing the damn hog call? If Cal lands these five stars, Cal can change the hog call, says Kapaski. No, it's going to take more than that, though, Michael. Come on now. No, 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 no. You're not changing the hog call because you got a couple of five stars. Musselman got some five stars. I mean, we're sitting here acting like this is a brand new concept at Arkansas to get like McDonald's All American caliber players. We've done that. We recruited pretty damn well in the, in the mid to late 80s, 90s, you know, and then. I mean, Mike Anderson had a couple of really good recruiting classes. You know, and Musk Mus did some damage. Let's not sit here and act like, oh, well, if he gets two five stars, then he could do whatever he wants with the hog call. No, 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 no. Win games, Michael. Win games, juggling balls. That's what we got to do. Then we could talk about changing the hog call. And even then, no, you're not changing the hog call. <laughs> Did Nolan Richardson do the hog dance? Cal was seen at Twin Peaks wearing the full on plastic. Uh uh-uh. uh. Stop. Stop playing. You're juggling balls. <laughs> I think people in Discord are tired of that. I've been uploading <laughs> I've been uploading those voice messages. He was twenty six years old. That's what you're up against. The 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 portal, the NIL. Uh, Cal still living rent free in the in the Mildcats' heads. Poor things. Yeah, they're they're kind of having a conniption fit on Twitter, aren't they? <laughs> you better get us at least two national championships before you change the hog call. It may take more than that. That is tradition here. <laughs> BBN be juggling balls. That's what we gotta do. We gotta, you know. I'm going to need a few natties before anybody starts talking about changing the hog call. Yeah, dude, that's, I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure I came into this world calling the, I'm, well, I was a Cardinal fan. Actually, my first onesie was a St. Louis Cardinal. You're not changing the hog call, even if you win natties. It's it's bigger. It's too big a deal in Arkansas, baby. It's too big a deal. It means too much. It means too much. Ty is a transfer receiver from AM reported, or is he a summer enrollee? Are you talking about uh oh god. Uh oh my god. <laughs> I can't think I know I know who you're talking about. Uh yes, he was here. If if it's who if hang on. I'm I'm gonna remember his name. Give me a second. I'm gonna pull it up here. I know his name. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, he's here. And uh, he wore number 11. Uh, I'm going to find it. Hang on. No, 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 no. Hang on. I'm going to find it. Okay. Jordan Anthony. Yes, he was here. He was here. He is fast. Caught a few balls. Caught a few balls. Uh, Yeah. There are, listen, We I did see the emoji. I'm surprised nobody's asked about it yet. But uh, Tyrone Broden did put out, I don't know if he deleted the tweet or not. Or maybe I got fooled into believing it was something that it wasn't. But uh, apparently there's a tweet by Broden, just a hand. There's been rumors floating around for weeks that he's gonna that he's gonna transfer. And yet, even when he went away for that week, you know, he came back. And I don't know that I see someone who intends on getting in the portal. And he came back for that scrimmage. That was the last thing that he did. Now listen. I say that. We know what happened not that long ago with uh, Mike Woods. He ended up going to Oklahoma. 
I hope that doesn't happen again. I don't know. No, I've not. I've not even talked to anybody about Broden because I haven't really entertained the idea of it. But anything is possible. I will say this: you can't afford to lose Armstrong. Not that he's. I haven't heard anything about Armstrong. I'm just saying, right? Armstrong, Broden, or Centennial. You I, you don't want to lose any any of those three. Now. And I hate to say this, if you're going to talk about a position on offense where you're like, okay, as long as it's just one guy, I'm fine with it. It's the tight end room. There's that dreaded word, room. Ah, I'm not supposed to say room. <clears throat> but if there's if there's a position where you're like, okay, as long as it's just that one guy, as long as his name isn't Luke Has, <laughs> or Varkey's Gums for that matter, he had a really strong spring camp, uh, whatever, you know. That's like the only spot on offense. Right now with the running backs, you definitely – I don't know if there's anybody there unless it's one of the walk-ons. And I don't think they are, and I've not heard anything. Yes, the Broden stuff has kind of been smoke. I don't know if there's anything to it. Again, I've not even entertained the idea yet. Uh, if I catch anything, you know I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in Patreon chat and Discord. But um, it's something worth keeping an eye on. Wouldn't shock me. It, we know this. Nothing – Nothing surprises should surprise you anymore. Nothing. So we'll just uh, monitor as best we can. He was juggling balls. That's what he was doing. Yeah, Jordan Anthony. Yeah, I, I brain farted. No diddy, says Wes. What's up, Wes? What's going on, man? Um. <laughs> Steeped in tradition, right? Broden posted that to say, I got hands. That's my theory, says Wes Brown. I hope that's all that is. Uh, Broden was electric through. I mean, he had the most sure hands. He looked uncoverable. Didn't matter who they matched him up with, whether it was seven on seven, 11 on 11. I mean, he, you saw him in the spring game in the red white scrimmage. I mean, he's, he just, you wouldn't think someone that tall and, and that lengthy would have the kind of moves and how strong he is to the catch. Now, Armstrong is a guy that I, I don't know how you deflect a ball out of that man's hands. Armstrong is very strong to the grab. I mean, he's, that's got to be one of his strengths. He can come, he could turn around, you know, and, and make a, make a strong grab on the ball. Uh, Broden just is so fast off the line of scrimmage. He's quick. He's going to be tough. I mean, I'd love. I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, if, if assuming God willing, Broden and all these guys stick around. Nobody hits the portal. You're going to see a lot of number five. I think he's going to be fun to watch. I really do. And again, I really hope he he sticks around. Uh, in the pod with J Rod says, "Why is a Kentucky fan juggling our balls in the in in the G chat?" <laughs> Stop juggling our balls. Those are our balls. It's, uh, let's put an end to this poll. It's at 58 minutes. I'm going to give you the final, you know, there's a little bit of a delay. I think you guys are about 10 seconds behind me, so I'm going to give you just a second here on this poll. If you want, if you haven't taken it yet, Hog Football will crush these last several portal spots. Now, keep in mind, with the plus two, with Chriswell and uh, the running back, uh, Augusta, with those two, that puts you at seven scholarships. We'll see if there's any more. And I, I again, I, I've told you guys before. I think you will see. I'm thinking at least uh, maybe two, maybe more. I don't know. Maybe more than that. You just never know. But you could end up with double digit amount of of uh, scholarship offers, and you're gonna have to fill some spots pretty quickly, depending on who leaves. But right now they're at technically they're at five, but. Criswell and, and Augusta would put you at seven. So even if it's just the seven, that's a lot. That's room, baby. You can make some moves. I, Criswell absolutely should be in the portal. I want him to go somewhere and get an opportunity to start and go do his thing. John Haas says, I'm here. I'm at it. What's up, Haas? How you doing, man? Broden and Armstrong, one-two punch. I'm telling you. I, I'm just, <laughs> Armstrong, what's crazy is, you know, and I got a second. I didn't talk to him very long, but I saw him at uh, at walk-ons. He just kind of mentioned his hammy. He said, "Yeah, just coming back from that hammy." Once he got 
once he was back, dude, he had a really good week of camp, and, and you saw it a little bit in the red-white scrimmage. Yeah, that's going to be a hell of a punch with Centennial lining up, moving over in motion over into the slot, breaking loose on those underneath routes. You're going to see a lot of – I think you're going to see a lot of typical Bobby Petrino crossing routes, wheel routes from the running backs. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we are going to see a lot of elements from OG Petrino. Let's just hope that Green is uh, is the guy to do it, right? And let's hope that the offensive line is is uh, they got to be they got to be better than what we saw last year. That's for damn sure. And the with the turnover there, we'll have to wait and see. Uh oh! In the pot of J Rod, got to go to the game. Hey, Cool just got back from the baseball games. Hope you had a good time, man. I think Stonehill. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that earlier, Michael Kapeski. Yeah, it looked like he was talking smack i love it though i love it i know you're not supposed to and it's not within the spirit of the of the sport and blah 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 but i love it man i'm here for it i love a little i love a little trash talk i love knowing that these kids are into it you know and the same with the nfl and the you don't see that kind of passion in the pros as often it's just another day you know if you watch the nba yeah i'm a celtics fan but eh, it's just another game it's too many games too many games in the MLB and there's too many games in the NBA. They need to shrink the games. I've been saying that for years. Nobody cares. And, you know, you're older, you're getting big checks. Not that they're, you know, the NIL is uh, not that far away. Let's end this poll. Let's end it. Wow, 49% of you think they're going to crush these last spots. That I did not expect that. That's why I like doing these polls, man. You guys kind of blow my mind. I'm freaking exhausted, Ty. 17-hour days. I ain't no young pup no more. We'll wait till you hit 40, John. It was outstanding getting to see the two home runs. That's awesome. Yeah, I bet that was a lot of fun. And it's a quality midweek opponent, right? It's not some – not that there's anything against mid-majors. We know there's really good mid-major schools. But this is Texas Tech, pretty good baseball school, pretty good team. Could get hot if they're if – they're, Pitching is a little better, and and uh, their their defense is a little better. I don't know all. Don't don't come at me. I'm sure there's some stat. There's so many analytics to baseball, but we know they're known for hitting. That's their bread and butter. Uh, and they're a top ten offense, I think, across the board. So hit the like, says Joe. That's right. Hit the like. West Brown's going to the. Oh, you're going to the game on Tuesday against UAPB. That's cool. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. So that is, uh, yeah. Make sure make sure you guys hit up the, the links down below. Shout out to Patreon supporters. Man, you guys help keep this thing afloat. I appreciate all Patreon supporters. All 101 of you. Awesome. You Again, you're keeping this whole thing afloat along with our, our sponsors, Direct Service Overhead, the Garage Door Company, Same Day Services, Quality Parts. Ooh, that soda's coming up. Uh, free estimates. Support local businesses, you guys. Direct service overhead, their local business. Give them a call today at 501-244-3667. They are locally owned. It's my boy Travis. You guys tell him Ty sent you. And, of course, our newest sponsor, Insurance Max. They've got you covered, man. Business, personal, life and health, retirement. They do it all. Check out their link. It is provided for you also down below. Their 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 number is on their site if you want to call them. It's Insurance Max. Speaking of uh, Wes Brown, he's the guy to talk to right there. We hog dance everywhere, Wes says. That's right. So I appreciate you guys for coming through. Again, like, share, subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you guys probably on Friday. I've got a YouTube short that I uploaded today. It's it's watching the the DBs. Go watch it. Go check it out. Share that as well. All right. I'll see you guys. Cerveza Cristal. Cerveza Cristal. Who keeps putting that in there? Who's doing that? Stop 
put the beer ad in my Patreon chat. <laughs>